when you get to that point the day you meditate on your being anointed one day as you are opening the scripture light it will no longer be thou anointest my head with oil that is stories a day will come something will leap upon you and whether you are sleeping whether you are wearing a pajamas or on jean or on suit the consciousness not just by shouting and saying i'm anointed it's a settled reality let me tell you with all humility i sat down with this book and as i meditated upon it it didn't happen every day but one day certain things just entered my spirit so this is how much power the believer can carry it says you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth when i saw it i don't know if i believed it the first time i was just sincerely reading the bible but one day light entered me the true spirit of dominion that there is no territory that sustains the power to fight your influence if you have not carried the consciousness of certain things you will only be a victim your mind will be swinging from left to right one day I meditated on the scripture that says whatsoever he doeth prospers now let me tell you that looks like a simple story oh yes whatsoever I do it prospers amen that no you have not gotten it you act on that thing it will never work for you he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of waters one day is by 2 a.m. in the morning this is you you are meditating on that thing whatsoever he doeth prospers you look at your hands whatsoever he doeth prospers whatsoever he doeth prospers it will make sense to you in a way that will annoy somebody close to you because they don't know what has entered you whatsoever he doeth prospers from that day you will never fail in anything again because it has entered your consciousness this is what it means in ezekiel 2 and verse 2 and the spirit entered into me the spirit of any revelation if it has not entered you you will keep gyrating this is the problem with the body of christ we shout over revelations that have not moved past the realm of knowledge into your consciousness in this shall all the families of the earth be blessed i meditated on that scripture and i came to a conclusion that i cannot be a cause to my world in this shall the families of the earth be blessed where i come from notwithstanding is is a blessing that god gave to abraham and his seed and galatians 3 29 says and if ye be christ then are ye abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise so he's talking about me i am a blessing if i come to your house i am a blessing some things must leave and some things must come if i shake hands with you it's not pride some things must leave and some things must come if you listen to me some things must leave and some things must come it's a consciousness it's not about empty boasting you can be shouting and the realm of the spirit will say jesus i know paul i know but who are you this is what great men like bishop oyedeko meditated upon and he said god told him he canceled his ministrations and he said get down and make my people rich now, that may a lot of people find it offensive that's why he didn't say it to everybody he said it to the one who can believe him mm. hallelujah this is what i believe oh this reading things randomly when the spirit of revelation comes to you eh you can stay on one scripture for one week it's not a competition to finish the Bible is that one scripture that has a treasure that defines the next 10 years of your life you stay there till the spirit of that word the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want I shall he never said I shall not want money if all you are thinking about is money is a sign that you are thinking carnally I shall not want this is the realm of sufficiency 
I shall not want men. I shall not want things. I shall not want influence. No. This revelation damages insufficiency forever. Never will you be without help. If God sends you to America, you shall not want. If he sends you to Europe, you shall not want. If he brings you to Abuja, you shall not want. You are crying simply because you do not know. You are wanting. Even though you are reading the scripture, it is not yet in your consciousness. Take it higher for me. We will pray until we are changed. We will pray until we are changed. We will pray until we are changed. We are changed. We are changed. We will stay until we are changed. Can I tell you the truth? There is nothing you can do with a man that has caught light beyond the book. If it has entered that realm of consciousness, only death can stop it from happening. It's a, it's a realm where it is settled. No matter what you say or do not say, as far as that result happening, it's a realm. Listen, this is a reality that both science and religion tell you that controls manifestation the realm of consciousness listen let me tell you the truth still take it half for me there are things I believe I can never be a victim of till Jesus comes and this is not empty talk I have stayed with scripture until that thing one of it is that I can never lack the help of men. No. No. It's not because I'm anointed. It's the revelation that brought that anointing. This thing you see, this grace called favor that you are shouting. You read it, you will never get it. it that's not how it works. We will stay until we are found. 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 We will stay. When God called me into ministry, I took time to pray. One of the things I covenanted with God with was that I did not want to manipulate God's people because of this money thing. I saw sincere, well-meaning people who love the Lord. But once you are pushed by the pressure of ministry, you would do things you never planned doing. But I know that I have to eat. And the implication of ministry is that you will feed many people. You will be like Father Abraham, having many children, your own and the ones that have forced themselves to be your own. And I said, God, I don't want to tell people lies. I had great men like Bishop Oyedeko, great men like my dear revered mentor, Dr. Miles Munro. They talked about the potency of walking in the blessings of God. While others were there arguing in pride with no result. I said, God, you can't be lying. Please show me. I confess my ignorance. I have read this thing, but it's not working. There are human beings in the world, but nobody's looking my direction. I don't need to go to a harbor list. There is a way. Hi. Job said there is a path which no fowl has seen. That the whelps of the lion has not gotten there. When I caught that revelation of I shall not want, I said this is it. And God is able to make all grace. If you think what prospers men is business, get ready to suffer till Jesus comes. Now, I'm not, I'm not against those things. Don't get me wrong. But first things first. The realm of the spirit is what controls the physical realm. But when you hold it there, bah, 
that's it you've held it you've held it it's true the same thing with the ministry of the spirit the anointing i saw great people that i admired walking in dimensions of the anointing and i said there has to be a way i got all the teachings and the materials i don't want to do a ministry speaking to people and they're shouting amen coming week after week making sacrifices and then they don't testify that is evil and is wicked in fact it's fraud i said i don't want that kind of thing father show me the secret to real power real genuine power i have found david my servant ah so god can find men but until he finds his servant he will not anoint you god can find joshua selman but he's looking for his servant for as long as you are still joshua selman that oil will not come to your head until you become his servant the anointing is not for men of god the anointing is for servants genuine people who love jesus beyond their reputation who want to see him glorified you see You know why sometimes you hear me tell these guys to play these things this is not it's not a movie one day I was meditating on scripture and the Lord took me to the story of Elisha he said bring me a mistral and while the mistral played he said the hand of the Lord came upon him and he began to prophesy then he says I will reveal my dark sayings upon the heart it may not work for everyone but that is how light came to me I valued divine presence when I meditated on the scripture Moses said do not send us from here if your presence I'm showing you how to manifest realities what provided what you are doing is just reading the Bible to ease the guilt of feeling less spiritual you will never never produce anything potent he said if your presence will not go with us and then here's what he said he said my presence will go with you and I will give you rest I said that's the key to rest the presence of God I remember in 2005 I spent a major part of that year doing a research on Jewish worship and the mystery of God's presence. I wanted to know what was it about Jewish worship and God's presence. That's when you saw that I started falling in love with all these kind of Paul Wilbur songs, King of Kings, we hail you most high. All these songs that came later on by the Spirit because I found out that there was a connection to these kinds of songs and the Spirit of God and the Shekinah of God. Listen, you must move past the realm of just reading scripture and get it to your consciousness. It will take time, but allow the Spirit of God move it. Stay in your one room and read the scripture on how God brings men out. The day it enters your spirit, you will know. The devil will know. Everything around you will know. And like a magnet, it will start drawing from anywhere on earth. The men and the circumstances that must make that word become reality in your life. I assure you on this. We'll fight it. They first come to you to find out whether you are aware and you believe. Then they find out whether it has become a reality in your consciousness. Then they find out whether you have obtained the grace to obey. If there is no point, they will attack you directly for no reason. The, the reason why Satan attacks primarily is because he's antichrist and he's a thief that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. There's no point stealing, killing, and destruction until there is something to steal, something to kill, and something to destroy. Let me tell you the truth. The kind of warfare that you have to fight to bear prophecy to your life, it will take stamina in the spirit hallelujah it is the reason why you see us pray it is the reason why you see us engage 
behind the physical manifestations that you see ladies and gentlemen look at me do you know the warfare that satan puts up just to get you to come here to hear what you are hearing now you think the devil will leave you to come to your house just like that but thank god for men and women who understand the art of the altar praying and saying lord everyone who should come and hear this word they will come by the spirit so even when your car does not work just when you are getting offended your neighbor says i'm coming for koinonia today let's go there's no excuse it's not a coincidence it was engineered by priesthood say spiritual warfare a family that does not pray will become a victim of satan a couple that don't pray will be a victim of satan a mother that does not pray will have her children turn into armed robbers and all kinds of people a father that does not pray is like a man who opened his gate and say if you are a thief just come in you are welcome to this house because if your house is not a house of prayer i have taught you it becomes a den of robbers a believer who does not pray among many other disadvantages you become a victim of the arrows that fly by day the noisome pestilences the destructions that waste in noonday someone shout minus me let the devil hear you oh as the arrows fly from wherever you know there there are all kinds of missile technologies today that the army uses that sometimes when you fire a rocket against a nation as they detect it they counter it immediately it's been programmed it will explode that thing in the air there and then fire another rocket following the trajectory where that thing came from come on now to backfire back to the place as i said this thing it just moved something in my spirit back to where it came from Shalakaposia. any man that programs anything against your life in the name that is above all names he returns back to that devil this night he returns back to that devil that night This concept of things backfiring happens so oh. ask Haman Haman dug a pit he had sized Mordecai this is how this guy will be hung there I wonder how he felt when it was his time to hang the Bible says now the Lord of peace himself is that in your Bible that he will give you peace always and by all means that means anybody that makes himself the trouble of your destiny may the god of vengeance arise over them in this season anybody that has vowed that provided he's alive your family will not laugh your family will not smile i say it again by the god who sent me let the sword of vengeance descend upon them this week descend upon them this week hallelujah I was once told the story of a young lady true story I don't know I think it happened I hope I get the whole story it happened because of jealousy and envy I think maybe some woman I was told stamped her feet and beat her chest in the front of the lady and said provided she's alive that girl will not go forward it will only work if you have not met power did you hear what i said i believe in power oh. i really believe in power we are wasting the time of god's people without power that coalition from anywhere while they make those enchantments while you are sleeping this family should not rise this family should not rise from nowhere like thunder from heaven Tabarus Kadiata, a power greater than all powers descends from the realm of the spirit with a manifestation in the physical realm and will scatter every plotting of darkness hallelujah it doesn't tire me to share our story when koinonia started i don't know who innocently decided to kill himself like that that they brought charm and hung it outside when they called my attention to it, I, in my mind, I said, who is this one now? Huh? You choose your battles with wisdom. Who wants to, you want to kill yourself for nothing? 
Abba. Even in, there's something called boxing. There's heavy weight. There's a, what's the other one? Middle weight. There's light weight. It's unfair to join some people together. The person who is a lightweight champion, he's only a champion based on those he's fighting. There are people when he joins the way they will punch him once. He will not only fall, he will die. May you be a heavyweight in the spirit. I said, may you be a heavyweight in the spirit. Believe us, please hear me. Do not let anything and any teaching, I say this with every sense of love, but with every sense of passion, do not let anybody make you downplay the relevance of spiritual warfare. If you believe that thing, you have destroyed your destiny. Now with all you, I love the body of Christ, but I owe you to teach you. Huh? Yes. There is a warfare dimension to living. Some of you, this is where you are now in your destiny actualization. The attacks in your life don't have a reason. And if you keep quiet, say, who did I offend? Have you said that thing before? Hello? Let me answer that question. You don't have to offend anybody. Just be born. Who did Moses offend? Who did Jesus offend? Provided they were born. The moment there is a prophetic word over you, whether you invite the devil or not, he will say, I, we have heard that there is a man of God rising from this family. Where is he? We've heard that there is somebody who is going to carry the grace to take this family out of shame. Satan does not look for everybody. Everybody will be his victim. But pending on the urgency, there are people he knows. If I attack this man, it's equivalent to attacking everybody in that family. So don't say, who did I offend? He will come knocking at your door. Hello, sir. I hear you are the firstborn in this family. I've come to destroy all the ladies to destroy the man. Don't, don't shut the door in fear. Open the door and tell him, all right, you will know that there are weaknesses on earth. You carry the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. Who are thou mountain before Zerubbabel, before this family? Listen, how do you know that you are under attack when the occurrences in your life do not match up? Are we together? With the commitments of value and obedience you are bringing mysterious things happening in your life in two months everything in your life disappeared you lost your job your wife lost her job your child who does well in school very brilliant child he's returned with a result that is an evil report and you are watching no sir wake that child up and say this night we are going to do vigil in this house you carry your lantern, carry your Bible, share one scripture. If you don't know any scripture, look for our teachings, get one scripture from there. Lead your family to prayer. Tell them, pray after me. Father, they repeat, in the name of Jesus, as a family, we declare no enchantment and no divination. Carry your CAC document from your business. Place it on the parlor there. Carry your child's uh, whatever it is. Place it as a point of contact. In the name of Jesus, my child will not fail. He will not waste my money. Are we together now? Three days in a row, you had a dream and you saw your wife dying. Call her. I'm not just your husband. I'm the priest of this house. Let me lay my hands on you. Listen, don't think I'm just acting. Do it. This is the responsibility of leadership. While the people are sleeping in your house, wake up and start walking to your parlor, 
to your bedroom your little son wakes up and he said don't worry boy go and sleep but if you want to learn follow me because one day you will learn too lay hands on everything in your house you had a dream that your car crashed in the name of Jesus what God gives is for good every good and every perfect gift God will not give me what will kill me in the name that is above all are you hearing what I'm saying now you are about to have a meeting with people and you know they are not born again what makes you believe they will not tie charms or come with all kinds of things you are a Christian but they are not Christians and someone comes to sit down spend the whole night enchanting your name send forces to your office before their arrival by the time those forces are coming they will see light and angels they said the same way you were praying he was praying too <laughs> hallelujah ah come to koinonia destroy apostle and destroy koinonia it's a joke before you rise come on now before you rise here comes that fire the same fire we were furnished out of the same fire that protected Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego huh? is the same fire that can kill and destroy too. This world is not a gentle place of consensus. I know I'm, I'm just a kind person. If that is your philosophy, save journey. Some of us have seen the cruelty of men and spirits enough. You don't fight out of anger and in foolishness. But the truth is that the whole world is said have respect for the covenant oh lord for the dark places of the earth are the habitations of cruelty respect your covenant the dark places of the earth the devil will kill you if he can did you hear what i said he would destroy anything he can destroy you give him access to your life your children he will tear you he will use men he will use systems he will even use believers you need to learn to be strong. I want you to take a minute. Just take one minute and pray and declare no weapon fashioned against me will prosper. Please open your mouth and pray. No weapon fashioned against me will prosper. Every tongue that rises against me will fall in judgment. Someone is praying. Para savas kalabaranta keparasya, krata gata bragata beleke parus kavenda keparest, krape kepere kepera dosata keta. Pray over your business. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your influence. Pray over the purposes of God in the life of your children. Someone is praying. Shais kapelenta kepras kabalakatos. Speak over your finances. No decline. In the name of Jesus, from glory to glory. Speak over your job. All the antagonisms around your office, surely they will gather. But by favor, your God will scatter them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mantles are falling here tonight. Anointings are falling here tonight. Graces are falling here tonight. The kings to be born. For revival to return, for the kings to arise, for revival to return. Yeah. Ali Ali Ho, oh. Ali Ho, oh. Ali Ali Ho, oh. oh, oh, oh. Ali Ali Ho. Oh. Elijah's arising here tonight. The poor 
arising here tonight. Hey. For the time arising here tonight. For the kings to be born. For revival to return. For the kings to arise. For revival to be done. Hey. Hey. Listen, brothers and sisters, I came here tonight by the Spirit of the Living God as a prophetic breach. Every house is built by some man. Although God is the builder, no man anoints himself. No man ordains himself. It's against the law of growth. And without all contradiction, the less. It says, he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet. You can receive a prophet in the name of your tribesman. The name of your brother. The name of a man of God. Please listen to me. Listen. I stood in a vision of the Lord. And I saw a generation. An entire generation. And they began to weep and cry. And then I stood in front there. And I said, why the tears? And the generation was shouting. And they said, there is no food and no water. And I said, am I the cause? And they said, you are the cause. That this whole generation is in hunger because of you. And I looked back. I said, how can a generation blame me? One man for a generation? And then I told them, I said, I'm coming. I must come. Listen. But I was afraid. Please listen. Just bring those under the anointing. Help. Be careful so that. Please listen and be sensitive. Mike, I hope you are working with these guys. Please. Listen. And then I was afraid because I wanted to leave that room to go and help them. Please listen. But there were certain people who were bullying me in that vision. The fear of them made me to be afraid but later on i said this generation is crying too much i said let me go out i took a step of faith in that vision i said if i perish i perish as soon as i open the door listen ah, there is a grace the spirit listen let's tie this up there will be a convocation of the spirit in this place Now listen please listen listen please listen as soon as i stepped out i saw an old man a giant old man he held my hand and said let's go for that generation please hear me my brothers and my sisters there are certain men that have no ambition on themselves I was not called to a church. If I had my way, I would never be doing what I'm doing. This is a mandate of a generation. When God called me, He saw you. And tonight, whether you are a pastor, apostle, prophet, if your heart can be open, my brothers and my sisters, you will receive something that is for a generation. We give you worship, worship, highest praise to the King. We give you worship. Bring them out, please. Yeah. Highest praise to the Lord. We give you worship, 
Please open your mouth in one minute and begin to cry. Let it be a cry of the Spirit. Man of God, pray. Kodis said, pray. There is a convocation. It's the realm of your glory. It's the realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. Tarara, tarara, tarara. Hey, 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 Turkey Salama, and a Turkey Salama, and a Salama, Salama. Oh, 
Keine Sorgen soll am Mann. Salama. 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 Hallelujah. Please listen. Now, please listen to me. Listen to me. Please listen. The hand of the Lord is upon me. Our time is gone and we may not be able to do I thought we may have time to pray for the sick but may not, not be time but I want you to receive something. Listen. You don't have to be a man of God. No. Now, please hear me. Those up the balcony please shift away from the main base there so that you don't fall and enjoy yourself. That's number one. Those outside, please be careful so you don't enjoy yourself. Number three, whether you are an usher or not, please, for the sake of management, anyone who is under the anointing close to you, please and please be your brother's keeper. I want to pray. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm seeing a fire in the realm of the Spirit. Listen. This is a grace for the prophetic. And as I pray, there are many people who will step into these graces. Will you open up the gate? Open up the doors. Will you open up the gate? Now I stretch my hands at the count of three. May this mantle for the prophetic. I stand by the rod of the higher priesthood at the count of three. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that mantle now. Take that grace. I shift you in the spirit. Step into that grace. The eyes that see. The ears that hear. Kaparakatos kabarianda. Ekatekatekatekate. Lift your hands. I'm praying for you. The Lord is showing me a grace for the healing ministry. There are certain people here. You have seen it in your visions. Right now I stretch my hands. Wherever you are. Receive that anointing right now. I activate that mantle. Like the Azusa Street Revival. Let there be a restoration. Mommy, there is an anointing on this woman now. I stretch my hands right now. There is a grace that is on this woman, shifting her to a dimension in the spirit. Two of you hold your hands. Two of you hold your hands. Take that anointing now. Uh, 
Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. Please lift your hands. Now listen. I'm looking in this congregation and I'm seeing all kinds of chains. Let me tell you this. Except God is not God. If you came here with any challenge, watch it leave you now. By the God, listen. By the God of Jeshurun that rides upon the wings of the wings, I stand with the rod of the higher priesthood and I declare that at the count of three, as you shout Jesus, every force sitting on your destiny that will not let you go, territorial powers, the manipulations and installations of darkness, you must leave. Are you ready now? At the count of three, shout Jesus. One, two, three. Go now. I command those powers. Go now. Out of them. Out of their life, out of their destiny. Out of their lives. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You must be released now. I release your family. I release your destiny. Even the lawful captain. I declare. Be released now. Be released now. Be released now. Please pay attention. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is asking me to release speed upon your life. Please listen. Please listen. Listen. Especially for those outside, listen to me. When I pray this prayer, people will start running under the anointing. Please hold them. That's why I'm telling you this. There is a grace for speed. I want to pray for you. You are standing for your family. Some of you are lecturers. Some of you, you, are, you have been in the same position almost forever. Right now in the name of Jesus. At the count of three, that grace will fall on you. For your family. Inside, outside. I stretch my hands. Right now, receive speed. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. You will run like Elijah. Receive that grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me the number 15. And the Lord is saying, I'm restoring you to the realm of visions. Visions, visions. Kariza ni hasakata la katopria eska. Embregeda sulekata. Visions, visions. I'm restoring you to the realm of visions. I want to release the grace for prayer and intercession. Listen, listen, listen. Prayer is not something you do mechanically. You will be tired. There is a grace. 
that quickens a man. There is a grace that gives you stamina in the spirit. And in Jesus name, I lay my hands on my own head. By the grace of the God who has helped me. I don't know what has happened to your altar. But right now, let it catch fire. Fire. Prayer fire. I bring prayer fire to your campus. I bring prayer fire to curse you. I bring prayer fire to coexist a new dimension of the grace to travel. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you are into the worship ministry? Where is this gentleman that sang Theophilus? Come. I want to do something very prophetic. Come. There is a grace on this young man you are seeing. That is not just come. Stand up. Come. Not only will you enter this grace yourself, my friend. God will use you. I don't know you. But look at me. My name is Joshua Selman. And there is a grace that you are stepping into. You have seen the hand of God. But the Lord is asking me if you will to shift you to a level. Your songs. Listen. Match it. Let me tell you. This gentleman, his songs will be the songs of revival of nations. It's not because he sang. I don't know him. It's what the Spirit of God is telling me. He may not look like it. But young man, let me tell you. You may be like a despised stone. But there is a grace that is upon you. That you will sing the songs of Miriam. And the angel of his presence will carry those songs to nations. And in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on you. By the Spirit of the Living God, from today, let the grace of psalmistry, let the grace that will shift you. I declare songs in the night and songs in the day. I quicken your spiritual illumination in greater dimensions. In the name of Jesus. Now, please stand up. I want to use you. The young man is weeping. Watch this. I'm holding this guy. As a prophetic signpost, I want to release a grace for the psalmistry for this generation. Father, I hold the hands of this gentleman as one that you have granted access to the grace for the Davidic order of worship. Right now, the worshippers, the Miriams and the Davids, receive the grace for psalmistry now. Receive the grace. Hail Abaratokata. Write the songs of the Spirit. Climb the ladders of worship. The Lord is taking you to African nations. Go and write it. This is the next level of your ministry. The Lord is taking you to African nations. I'm seeing you in Ghana, South Africa, Zambia. The Lord is taking you to these nations. You will sing the songs of the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Not only Him, I'm praying. There are people who have been kept in the same position. By prophecy, rise to a new level. Rise to a new level. Hallelujah. Listen. I pray for anyone in ministry here. There are great servants of God in this nation. There are great servants in this place. Men of God, I regard and I honor every one of you. My ministry is not in any way to show superiority. It is by the privilege of God's election of grace. 
but I stand in agreement with every servant of God here. Let the mantle for the revival of this generation let it fall on you now. Let it fall on your ministry now. Signs and wonders. I declare an activation of ancient spiritual wealth. Yes, you hear me. I stand by the privilege of God's grace. And I declare that from today, may your campus become a spiritual portal. We open up the vistas of the spirit allocated to this campus and we declare that never will there be a time when God will lack men on this campus. I pray for every fellowship regardless of denomination I pray for you be strengthened by the hands of the spirit. I don't know what your family members are going through that you left to come here but please let me agree with you that in the name of Jesus and if God be God may the angel of the Lord's presence go to your homes and correct every pattern correct every pattern that can see scripture the grace for illumination access to the mysteries of the spirit I pray for you may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now I pray for every final year student here let's graduate you right here in the name of Jesus, whatever challenge you have that is threatening your graduation, I bring you the power of prophecy. And in the name of Jesus, let the hand of Zerubbabel that started 100 level, may that same hand graduate in the name of Jesus. Every lecturer here, I declare, who is due for promotion or there are certain benefits by the God of heaven, may you step into your next level. I banish every doctrine of error from your campus forever every operation of cultism and witchcraft I define their spiritual borders and I drive them out of your campus I don't know what door has refused to open. The Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bands of iron in sunder. I declare over every closed door, over your life and destiny, let it be open now. Let it be open now. Let it be open now. Please hear me. If there is anyone here marked for death or your family members that they will see an obituary and say survive by death I command you leave everyone and every family here.
Listen. I don't know what left your life. Relationships, money, opportunity. The same way Samuel caused the donkey to return back. I call everything that has left you. Hear the word of the Lord. Return back now. Return back now. Can I pray for your spiritual life? Listen. Many believers are religious but are not truly passionate about God. One leg in, one leg out. Today here, tomorrow there. There is a grace for stability. Listen, the Bible says, Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having this seal. It says, Seeing that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. And to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. I pray by the supply of God's grace. Every habit here eating you up. Everything that, that is a threat to your Christian experience. Be free from it now. 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 Masturbation, pornography, immorality, all kinds of things. Be free from it now. Hallelujah. Let the fire of evangelism like an Olympic light. Let it stand upon the spiritual gate of your campus. May your campus become a place not just of learning but of salvation. Hallelujah. Listen to me. You have honored me and you have received the grace that God has so graciously given. I pray for you. Any man that fights you goes down immediately. Any man that fights you goes down immediately. Hallelujah. I want to make our time is gone. But give me five minutes. I want to make an altar call. Please, if you can just shift them back. Now listen very carefully, please. Altar calls are trivialized by many, 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 many individuals. Because for us, it looks like it is cheap. It is not charismatic. There are people here inside up the balcony and outside. Right from when this conference started to the times of worship, the times of the word, the times of the impartation, the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to you. And to tell you that it is time to win that war of your destiny. You may have been born by Christian parents. I don't care whether you are a leader. I don't care whether you are a pastor. The Bible says ye must be born again. And there are people here, you are hearing my voice. Please listen to me. It is important to mean business with Jesus. And please let this not just be an emotional thing. The space here may not be enough and I don't want you to interrupt anybody.
but you are here right now and you are saying apostle i'm tired of the way my life is i need to have a genuine encounter not just a superstitious religious thing i mean it with jesus i'm going to count one to ten please just clear the way for them and make sure you don't match or injure anybody as i count one to ten i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here right now new testament a personal covenant with that individual that becomes the authorized platform for his releasing that power now when this happens the sacrifice that that man went through to allow him to be able to host that dimension of god will give him a level of accreditation no man in that dispensation will step into this dimension ignoring this man you can love god and fast alone but when you ignore this man when god loves you he will refer you back to the authorized system he has placed please listen let me show you a mystery how can we see by ourselves unless you take over i have tried it on my own jesus take over i truly fasted on my own but jesus take over let me speak to you and i tell you this with all humility i don't claim to know everything in the kingdom i am only an effective member of the body i have also gleaned from the wisdom scattered in the body but this that i teach you it's not a revelation it's an office <laughs> so on earth today the covenant that represents the spirit of faith on earth is resting upon a man who may look very childish and weak called Kenneth Copeland. Pick from anywhere in the world whoever must manifest faith at a global level must not only align to God but must also submit to the reality that this grace carries. Please listen. Listen. This world is the world of men. If you know God alone you will not succeed. I know that we say, God, I will know you alone. You are right in terms of the fact that but I'm giving you the dynamics of the operation of the kingdom. God wants to ordain David as king because he's tired of Saul. Samuel stands in between and refuses. And David is suffering in the wilderness. God has agreed to move a man a man refuses and another man's destiny is suffering and god would have said samuel i will punish you but he was the authorized system for impartation and transference god could not ignore him he had to come and plead with him how long will you weep samuel seeing that i've rejected saul as king go to the house of jesse you are delaying a man was he the only prophet hmm. i show you a mystery The arrogance of our generation is why many people can never enter superior dimensions of the anointing. I will show you. It is not human worship, but there might be something we have been missing. If God connects that missing link and we pray, my assignment is done. Are we together? Listen very carefully. Until Jesus came, the authorized channel for accessing the was John. John the Baptist, who you call John the prophet. Is that true? Because the, the organogram of the move of God is that every time Jesus is about to show up, Elijah must show up first. Elijah is not a man. Elijah is a spiritual prophetic system that foreruns every move of God. The first manifestation of Elijah started with Noah. <laughs> Listen. 
You see bodies on earth, but these bodies are hosting ancient mantles. Listen to me. If all you see are human bodies, you will miss something quickly. How can I see it on my own? Unless you take over. Was that not what the Ethiopian Enoch said? How shall I see except some man teach me? Listen. So Jesus is walking on earth as the son of God. But his heaven remained closed for 30 years. Jesus, your Jesus, the word became flesh. The logos of God could not open his own heavens. Keep quiet. Watch this. Until he found out the man who represented the voice of God. And when he came and met John. John sees him and says, Behold the Lamb. John could see that was Elijah. Because the Bible says, Before the great and terrible day of the Lord, Malachi, Elijah will always go forward. It is every move of God will start with Elijah first, before God comes. The prophetic. So Elijah comes in John. And John looks at that 30, 30 year old body and sees the ancient of days in it and says, Behold the Lamb. And then he says, mm -mm, Me too, I've longed for your coming so that I can receive this. Jesus made a statement we must learn suffer it to be so. This is an ordinance, it cannot change. John, my heavens will remain closed and the Father will never speak until I submit to what you represent. You are not a man, you are a system. Listen. And then, John dips Jesus in water. The moment he came out, Bible students, what does the Bible say? And the heavens opened. And then God spoke. Now, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, pleased by his alignment, Therefore, eh, a transference has happened. Hear ye him. Jesus would have been surprised ignoring John. Are you learning what I'm saying? There are men who are not men. There are men who are storehouses. They host mysteries that sometimes they themselves do not even know. The Bible is a continuation of a story. It's only the actors that change. The story is a straight line. The same way Jezebel is not a woman, Jezebel is a system. Was she not the woman upon the horse? That holds the blood of the Matthias. And that Jezebel is also a businesswoman. She can make the kings of the earth rich through her harlotry with them. Jezebel, the system. And Jezebel is also a prophet. It's in the Bible. She can prophesy. So Jezebel shows up. And Jezebel is a structure that always seeks authority and influence over a territory. The moment Jezebel comes, she wants to marry the king because she wants authority over a landmass. This is the character and the operation of this system called Jezebel. So Jezebel shows up and then becomes the wife of Ahab. And then Elijah, God's system of restoration of God's patterns and order also shows up. Notice the fight was between two systems. Jezebel, Elijah. That's it. You will wonder, why are two people fighting themselves like this? Are there not other people in the world? They knew what they were fighting. Jezebel was not there when Elijah was sending fire. But she vowed that she must take away his head. Now Elijah goes to heaven and the body died. Fast forward the New Testament... Elijah returns back in John. Jezebel returns back in Herodias. The story continues. Now, watch this. Remember her vow.
that she would take away Elijah's head. So when the little girl danced before the king, sit down, sit down, sit down. When the little girl danced before the king, and the king asked her, what do you want? She had to go to that system, Jezebel, to say, what, what should we do? And she said, like I promised, I want the head. The system that restores men to God, cut it off. Please sit down. How can I see it on my own? Unless you take over. How will I know it on my own? Unless you take over. Listen to me. Every mantle and every grace that ever came from heaven is still on earth. Mantles don't leave the earth. No. But the problem is, where are they? I will show you. Listen. <laughs> there are three official storehouses for mantles. Number one, physical geographic territories. Physical geographic territories. The same way there are mineral resources. There are spiritual resources distributed territorially. That means Kogi State has a spiritual allocation that was given this state. Notice the kind of men of God that come out from this state. Notice their inclination to the prophetic. There is a mantle. It's not just a desire. Notice that all the men of God that come from the south and the west their dimension of the prophetic is largely not revelatory it's creative it's a grace may god bless you and change your life they will say and you find out you'll come back with testimonies they may not be able to give you word of knowledge but they can creatively speak it doesn't matter the church it's a grace like mineral resources so the anointing is hosted in physical territories please believe this number two the anointing is stored in spiritual institutions hmm. there are churches and institutions that as a corporate entity there are storehouses of certain mantles on earth look at this how many of you have observed that there are certain churches even before you know some principles you've started getting the results just by going there huh? institutions was it not solomon who dedicated the temple and he prayed and said arise O god and come now to your resting place and there was a covenant with that physical spiritual structure that lord whoever looks at jerusalem this temple and prays hearken to it is that true he didn't say if he prays right provided he's facing that direction honor it and so when daniel was in babylon and they passed a decree and he knew that he could not take the risk of trusting his faith he opened the window towards jerusalem to that temple and prayed and invoke the covenant of God's presence upon that place. Are we together? The last storehouse for the anointing is men. 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 Elisha died of sickness and the man to remain in his bones. They were passing a dead man and the dead man by mistake fell and rolled no prayer no fasting no clashing of cymbal no keyboard no nothing it just touched that bones and all of a sudden the man comes back to life there are men today who are spiritual storehouses when the bible wants you to receive the grace for prayer the man who exemplifies that dimension is Elijah. When God wants to lead you to the realm of encounters, the man who exemplifies that dimension is Jacob. Men as God's representatives of dimensions. Now listen, 
on earth today please hear me there are still men when those who carry those graces die god will find new people and reenact a covenant of continuity with them and his program continues so when god wants to introduce certain graces to a territory he knows the men who have these graces and he will find a way of taking them like the ark of god to those territories to introduce those please listen when you honor a man you don't just honor revelation or sacrifice honor starts from discernment who is this man when it was time for elisha to receive what was the requirement having followed from bethel to gilgal down now to jordan look at it he says if you can see me was he not looking at him i hope you know that elisha was never supposed to be a prophet go and read your bible there's no prophecy that elisha was supposed to. elisha was a farmer he just found interest in a man and said this guy is not an ordinary man this man are you are you look like you're a prophet but you are more than a prophet and he left all and began to pour water in him as angry and temperous as elijah was elijah said no problem elijah had a school of prophets meaning the next prophet should come out from that school but they did not have the eyes to see they could all prophesy because completely they knew he would be taken to heaven not one person corporately they knew they said do you know god is taking your master that wicked man that elijah we can prophesy he can prophesy we can heal he can heal what's the difference but elijah said there is a difference this man <clears throat> a man that calls down fire a man that does this and that and he says if you can see me watch this that means if you can discern what i represent if you discern my systemic representation that there is a system hidden in this body you will receive it and the moment he discerned he saw chariots coming because it is appointed unto men to die once so if a man doesn't die he's not a man he saw chariots coming from heaven and he said my father my father the chariots of israel and the horsemen thereof and something left elijah and the moment the sons of the prophet saw it he went to the jordan river listen not every man to can pass the jordan even the jordan knows so when elisha held that mantle he said where is the lord god of elijah you would stand near that river for many years and then write a book that Jordan cannot be parted just because you tried. But when Jordan meets the mantle assigned to part it, every problem is relative. Relative to the grace and the mantle confronting it. Don't generalize problems. We're about to pray. Saul! loses his donkey listen carefully and after three days they cannot find the donkey and they said look let's go and look for it after three days of frustration they said let's go back to our father kish so that he will not leave the issue of donkey and start thinking about us and they said no listen he said there is a holy man of god do you know how that man of god came through the prayer of a woman who had been barren for many years this is what satan was fighting satan was not fighting hannah satan was fighting samuel he was a voice a man whose word would not fall to the ground like god and he said there is a holy man of god let's go and meet him he will tell us watch this as soon as they get to the city gate they see this strange being called samuel and he looks at them 
a challenge they had suffered for three years. He said, forget about the issue of uh, restoration. Just climb up. Let me go and tell you what is in your heart. That means every mountain is relative. It's only a mountain because of the kind of grace you are carrying. You will confront another grace that will trivialize that mountain overnight. These are principles. And then he looked at him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be king over Israel? He poured oil on him. Immediately Samuel looked at Saul. The donkey started going back home. This was a man who looked for his own donkey for three days. He didn't find it. But he met another man just from eye contact. The donkey started going back home. Samuel had waited for Saul to come and offer sacrifices. And Saul, Samuel was wasting time. And the people began to put pressure upon Saul. What happened? Saul offered the sacrifice. As soon as he was done, Samuel came. Are we not all men of God? Are we not all anointed? Didn't Jesus die for all of us? So says an arrogant and an ignorant generation. And then, Samuel comes and meets Saul with the sacrifice done. I say, oh dear Saul, you have done foolishly. You would have allowed me to come and do this thing. And God would have established your throne forever. It would have been the thou son of Saul. Have mercy on me. Saul, now that you have done this, your kingdom is taken away from you. Please listen to me. You have come tonight for an impartation an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities it's not just a transference of anointing our lives and our results are governed by what is upon us the grace upon you is what governs the possibilities around you everything on earth is obedient it just depends on the grace speaking to it And so when God wants chaos you, He wants Kogi state to step into certain dimensions by the privilege of the election of grace, then He will send men. Men who, by the sacrifice of alignment, He has lifted them as pillars to represent certain dimensions of Him to a generation. You cannot ignore these men. It's not pride. You will ignore them to your own spiritual peril. No matter what you know about God. I started my journey as a believer loving the Lord. My grandfather is the first cooking president. For those of you who know that denomination. And so I come from a family, a lineage of missionaries. And people who love God. But a time came when I started having very strange, inexplainable encounters. Please listen very carefully. I started seeing things and hearing things that I could not understand and explain. I asked a lot of men of God questions and they could not answer. And I said, What is this? The first day I took the book, God's General, when I opened that book, I started crying. It was as if I was reading about my family. I said, this is it. Something within me is a spiritual tribe. Like the nation of Israel arranged according to their tribes. I saw it. I had found a place. So this was the prompting when I began to read about these people, I learned all of this. I was happy and passionate. A few years later, I would now begin to have encounters. Now please listen. Encounters must be guided by the word of God so that you don't dapple into all kinds of demonic metaphysical things. 
but I started having encounters with those you know and call to be God's generals some of them I never knew them it was from those encounters I read and I said oh this is them this is this this is that and one of the encounters I met a man average height and he finished talking to me I, I couldn't even remember what he was saying and then I was crying and he was on his way going and I just I said sir please what is your name and then he ignored me for a while he moved and then he turned and said Paul your apostle Paul though we are few we are surrounded by many who have crossed that river before listen that though we are few we are surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing forever I started searching for God's generals who were alive on earth to meet them I wanted to meet them in their lifetime and receive these mantles before they would go. I only had the privilege of meeting a few of them. Sadly. I remember one of the men that I met. He began to tell me the story. And he said... One of the generals of faith looked at him and told him, he said, make sure you do not die with your mantle. He said, find young men who are faithful and let them carry this mantle before you go. Are we together now? Yes. And then he laid hands on Lester Soro and then he laid hands on this man of God and then he looked at me and after he prayed and ministered to me I searched for Charles and Francis Hunter some of the greatest healing evangelists that this world had known a hundred wheelchairs in a single meeting not, not the childish things we do here and make a lot of noise about these were men who had gained mastery over spiritual things I was to travel to the U.S. to go and scrub their toilets for two weeks. I was not going to preach as a man of God. I was going to go and drop that. You will never receive from a colleague. There must be a spiritual potential difference if you ever want to receive anything. I was going to scrub their toilets and God sees my heart. It was from the depth of my heart I was going to do it. Reinhard Bonke, crowds of people. I was tired. I stood there for six hours. He prayed and preached the next day. Mighty miracles. I was already walking miracles. I was already seeing visions. I was already walking in superior dimensions of revelation. But I didn't go to that crusade ground as a colleague. I went as one in need of something that my generation will testify about. By the next day, I said, no, I must serve this anointing. I can't just go there as a big man to receive. So I saw them wheeling people on wheelchairs. And I said, please, can I join? They said, no, 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 these people are trained. Um, I'm not in the committee. I said, what does that mean? Committee or not, I came here to receive. I must walk. Oh. I said, they should allow me. While I was wheeling the people, the wheelchair to the front, I was praying. I said, Lord, this is how it will be in my own meetings too. I am honoring the systems you have put on earth. So far it to be so. That all scripture may be fulfilled. I stood there. You've heard my story. A pregnant woman was standing next to me. We stood for six hours. Occasionally the woman will be tired and have to lean on me. I was almost saying, Madam, this is not my child. I mean, we all came for this crusade. Too. I mean, what is all this, this, this trouble you are giving me? But when you are desperate to carry something, even pain will not interrupt you. Listen, I set my eyes on Reinhard Bonke, 
while he was preaching his message you know how it is very simple and for those of us that god has trusted with some revelation you know the pride that comes with people that have debt i mean what is this man saying he's just sharing a story nothing to captivate me but i said i must receive this so i know what i came to do i stood there and the moment he finished preaching he was about to minister the baptism then he now said to take a cup of water suddenly my hunger had reached the heavens I was no longer in that crusade ground. I saw a big bird. The first vision of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit I would see in my life. The bird was not flying. It had like silvery bands on the wings. Hovering around the entire crusade ground. And the Spirit of the Lord took me to Genesis chapter 1. And the Spirit of God hovered around. He was about to pray for miracles. And that was when the Lord told me that the union between the movement of the Spirit and the spoken word is what gives birth to the miraculous. Listen, when I came back from that vision, I didn't know that I had backed the stage. I just rejoiced. I said, this is it. I've gotten it. I've gotten it. I've gotten it. The Lord instructed me to go to Canaan land. Just one or two examples and then I'm done. And said there was a grace to receive on God's servant, Bishop David Oyedipo. I took a seat, got the flight, went there. And then, you know, the rest is history. Finished doing what I went there to do. I came out to enter the car and the Holy Spirit told me, He said, come out on that ground. And said, put both of your hands on the ground. I said, what is this now? I placed my hands. And it says, from this day, you have entered an overflow anointing. The anointing is like an address. You can know where it came from. I didn't used to prophesy and walk in the prophetic so much. The miraculous, the demonstration of the Spirit. Until a day came, I was watching the video of William Branham. It was in the night. People had insulted that man just because of the little errors that he had towards the end of his life. And you, if you carry that kind of grace, you will start error from day one, based on what you are seeing. So we must salute the level of grace. Was it not the spirit of Moses that came on 70 elders and they could not stand? Part of it all. Sometimes don't criticize men. Find out the weight of what they carry first. A little of the spirit on a man comes on elders and none of them could stand. And, Moses, and they were all prophesying, yet Moses never prophesied. Look at the discipline with that kind of anointing. It came on 70 people and their mouths could not close. And yet Moses was meek. He would keep quiet with that kind of anointing. Are we blessed? Hmm. I am a product of things. And my encounter with Jesus Christ didn't even jump the steps of honoring these systems. It's amazing that even if you meet Jesus, he will still refer you to the systems that he put upon the earth. My greatly revered mentor, my heart bleeds. The man who taught me on the kingdom, late Dr. Miles Munro. I love him and I honor him in life and in death. I was in worry for a conference. The morning he died, suddenly my chest started paining me. It was a rare occurrence. I said, what is going on? Because you see, there is a level of genuine connection. God oh, bless you, precious saints. Luke chapter 18 from verse 1. Jesus speaking and he said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. To this end we bring you the tidings of the Lord. We ask that you live a prayerful life in this season and in this year. That the promises of God concerning your life and concerning everything He has spoken, you see them, they truly come to pass. 
live a prayerful life this year. This has been one of the pivotal mandates of Reflector Hub TV on this space and by the help of God through his servant, Apostle Joshua Selman, is here to spur you up, to strengthen you, to, to make you realize that prayer is of utmost importance, even as we leave this close of the day of the earth. So do ensure that all your needs are being tabled to God in prayer. God will definitely meet you at the very point of your need. Don't give up yet because he is working wonders in your life. Ensure you share this video to loved ones. Ensure this video gets to everybody you know on every social space. Don't forget to share this video and remain blessed. God bless you.